The Last Faith is a Soulsborne inspired take on the Metroidvania genre, and following the tradition of the games before it, this game doesn't hold your hand and it can be very unforgiving. Today I'll show you everything I wish I knew before playing through The Last Faith. I'll be avoiding all major spoilers and I'll put a warning before any minor spoilers as we get to them. Let's get started. Number 1. Your starting class only affects your starting attributes and not your equipment. Many people talking about this game compare it to Bloodborne, with the gothic aesthetic, weapons design, and even the leveling system all taking inspiration from the series. So from that, I wouldn't blame you for assuming the combat style choice would have some sort of effect on your equipment, armor, and spells. Oh look! Since the marksman has a pistol, that must mean I get a pistol too, right? It makes absolutely zero difference. Okay, that's a lie. It does change these stats here, but since everyone starts with the same dexterity scaling sword, the six extra instinct you got isn't going to be helping very much. And as a mini bonus tip, the weapon stat requirements don't even prevent you from using a weapon effectively, and the penalty is fairly minor. Even an A scaling dex weapon with a 12 dex requirement only has a minus 5 damage penalty for being 3 levels under the minimum. And you can still use your weapon skill. If all that doesn't convince you the starting class doesn't matter, I don't know what will. Number 2. Apple crates give Nycrux. Sometimes, a lot of it. There are a lot of destructibles scattered around that you can break to receive consumables, like health injections and demi-oxide rounds. Unfortunately, many of these boxes have absolutely nothing in them. And when I say many, I mean almost every single box. And then there are these apple crates. I dare you to tell me these don't look like apple crates. I swear, they look just like apples. Look at these things. I don't know, maybe I'm just stupid, but for the first couple of hours of the game, I thought these apple crates gave you nothing as well. But they do always give you something. Nycrux, and a lot of it. Most enemies in the early game only give you 50 to 100 Nycrux, but one of these delicious boxes of Honeycrisp apples gives you 1 to 2,000. So break them when you see them. You're gonna need it, especially with those ridiculously high weapon upgrade costs. And if you want to be extra strategic, you could even save them and mark them on your map just in case you die and need a small Nycrox boost for something at the shop or for some levels. And while you're looking for some boxes, second bonus tip, use the right analog stick to look around when you're on high platforms or when a room with an open ceiling. Some things are hidden just out of sight, even after you jump or crouch. Number three, quit loading is faster than running back to the altar. As you progress through the story, acquire all the abilities and clear out most of the areas, you will inevitably need to do some backtracking to find some missed weapons, collectibles, and breakable walls. Since the map is relatively large, as you run out of collectibles, it will become more and more difficult to find anything. It usually goes like this. You check your map for some blacked out sections or potential hidden walls, you go check, you find nothing, and you run back and teleport to another altar and repeat. This can get pretty tedious, so if you're going back empty handed, quit out of the game and load back in instead. This takes just a few seconds, and it will put you back to the last altar you rested at, saving you a lot of time when you're giving the map a once over to find anything you missed. Now this tip comes with a bit of a warning. This is essentially loading the save from the last altar autosave. Anything you did from the altar to where you are when you quit out will not be saved, so only use this when you didn't find anything worth keeping. Now before number 4 I have a bit of a spoiler warning. If you have not unlocked the ability to open these doors, then here's your warning to skip to the next chapter. All right, I'll give you like five seconds. Okay, are they gone? Awesome. Back to number four. Number four. Transforming lets you jump much, much farther. Once you've beaten the Burnt Apostle and gotten the Lost Mark of Transcendence, you yeah! gain an ability to transform into a Nycrux beast form. In this form, you move dramatically faster and gain a teleport instead of a dash. This won't help you for reaching higher areas, but with the move speed increase and the teleport dash, this can really help reach some areas previously too far away to reach. For example, 
in the starting area, there is a long pit of spikes, which is so long, you might have not even known that there was something over there. And with the base jump, there's just no hope of crossing it. But the beast form easily traverses gaps even this large. However, you do need to be a little bit careful. It's possible to run out of power before you make it back. So if you're jumping over stage hazards, make sure you keep an eye on that power gauge, or else you might end up stranded, or even worse. So yeah, don't do that. Those are some things I wish I knew before playing The Last Faith. If you thought these tips were helpful or you learned something, then leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, then freaking don't. Gosh. Just kidding. Please subscribe. Okay, thanks. Bye.